All right, so this uh, came today. It came out today. The people are running out of their inflated cr- inflation created savings in around March. So <clears throat> on the trend we're on right now, we are March. I've already been talking about the reverse repo going to zero. I've been talking about the BTFP being pulled March 11th, and now all those funds we got in COVID from the uh, from the stimulus checks. They are set to be run out in March. This is on top of credit card debt being at all time high, um, uh, default going on all time highs. All of this happening is is starting. And now you take the people's the money they're using. Now, this is at this point, you can imagine this money is being used to to dip out on their debt payments, stuff like that, just to survive. Okay, people are using their credit cards more than ever. And so they're probably using their savings to pay down their monthly credit card bill. Everybody's living beyond their means right now. And we uh, buy now, pay later was the largest it's ever been in December. And those bills are starting to come due. And and, uh, I heard a crazy thing the other day that that buy now, pay later does not count towards... um, towards the, the counting of credit, uh, when, when they're counting a credit card debt, that does not count towards that until somebody defaults. Isn't that wild? So that's held off the books. So the credit card inflation is even bigger than we think. And now we're getting to the point where people aren't going to pay, be, make their payments even more so. I'm telling you, March is on the radar. And now our stocks are starting to get, you know, we, we we saw strength in most of our stocks today. I don't know if it'll last. We probably have a couple more red days coming up, maybe a few. But the point is, is we're in this fight right now, but we're starting to see some turning around. Okay, the markets have been uh, very volatile the last two weeks. Up, down, big days down, um, big days up. It's just all over the place. s and is trying to break 5,000. Uh, they got all this stuff going on. But meanwhile, this liquidity crisis is coming. And right now it's it's February eighth. We are uh, what? F- February is a short month, so to, to March eleventh, we're we're less than thirty days away from from this starting to happen at that around that March eleventh date. So it is it is getting nuts. And when you look at this, collateralized debt. Okay, the CDO market was four hundred billion in derivatives before collapse in 08. Then it is now 1.25 trillion. So that is three times larger the CDO market right now, debt obligation market. Um, when this goes, if if it goes big or small, whether they creep it down or it blows up, it is going to. It's it, everything's going to change. It's all being written on debt. So um, I'm telling you guys. It is, uh, things are increasing and the pace is increasing. We, we need to pray happens is that one of these pop off at a time. And so we can at least, at the very least, catch one or two of them before things get really bad. And I have, I kind of, I'm starting to feel like Pedro was saying that once these start going, they're not going to stop, which I already felt but now it's as things as it's getting worse and worse out there with the um, liquidity. I'm not worried about us getting paid, but what I do think is that as these go, it's it's going to bring the market down with us eventually when it hits the third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh one. But they're going to keep popping off, and the market's going to be coming down with it. I believe. I don't know how far, but what is going to happen is at around that time, whether it makes it to the fifth one, sixth one, seventh one of these stocks popping off, um, depending on how fast they all go, that's going to really dry up a lot of liquidity. And that's when things are going to get wild. And so my hope and prayer is that it's our stuff that goes off and we catch it um, in time for this so we can be ahead of it all. It doesn't mean at any point is not none of this will run. That's not my point. My point though is that I want this to all happen for us before the economy goes to complete junk so that our money is worth more, we have more opportunity to buy up good assets, all that kind of stuff because I want everybody to be positioned in a good place. Vince, why will our stocks go if the market tanks? I mean, I've said this a many <laughs> Jay, you're getting yelled at? Oh no. <laughs> 
Um, what's up, Robert? Vince, um, I mean, I've said this a lot, but where we're at, ZJOL, GTI, Finger, all these, our shorts are trapped. That's a big difference than shorts catching on to um, a stock that is tanking, like a... Um, you know, like, like when the bank stocks tank or, or, uh, something's going out of business, like, or PayPal does some stupid, like they just did. Um, when a stock is, is a business decision is terrible and it's going down, the shorts jump in and they catch it going down and they make a bunch of money and then they get out quick. Okay. That's what, that's what smart short sellers do. These naked short sellers sell, 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 sell. And they usually want to do one of two things. They're either hoping the company panics and reverse splits and gives them easy outs or, um, you know, or it goes bankrupt and then they owe nothing and they, they get to keep what they made and they own nothing because the company went bankrupt. That is the best case scenario for naked shorters, uh, creating counterfeit shares. In these plays, they have no out uh, except to pay because they're trapped. They're so far underwater and the, the companies are not RSing. They're not diluting incredibly to the shorts, um, giving them a bunch of shares, like creating an ape or something like that, like AMC did. And they're not anywhere near bankruptcy. GTI, I always say, is the cockroach you can't kill. Even though it's not making money, it has such low overhead, it's never going to go anywhere. Finger is a growing company that's doing amazing. ZJI Whale is a hot Chinese stock that's got the shorts way under, and we have a bunch of whales who own the float, and so there's no way they can get out. <clears throat> so we have these amazing stock opportunities, and I'm sure there's other out, out there I don't know about, but these are the ones I'm focused on. So when, when liquidity starts drying up, these guys, these, these short sellers right now, they're completely reliant upon the fact that the brokers are allowing them to keep short selling. They're allowed to do it. They're allowed to stay alive by the good graces of brokerages, banks, SEC, all that. But when things get hot, when things get bad, that all will go away because everybody's going to be running for the hills to save their own money to get in uh, to to get in good investments to get in safe assets safe havens if you've seen margin call you can see a really good example of how a um, a big firm a bank freaks out when it's time and they start selling everything and they start moving their money around and because they want to try to preserve themselves once that happens the shorts have no more lifeline and the only way out is up and so uh, because they legally owe us, there's no way out. So we get paid one way or the other. So that's why when the economy goes bad, we catch naked shorters because they're not, they're not the same thing as regular shorts.